Hello everyone, I am Vikraman. In this lecture, I am going to discuss step-by-step -step instruction on how to make an image classification application in Android. Deep learning has a lot of interesting application when it comes to images. Image classification, image segmentation, object detection, style transfer, some of the really cool applications of deep learning. Uh, but dealing uh, with images in uh, Android Studio is a little bit tricky. I am going to discuss step-by-step -step, uh, instruction and uh, make it really easy for you. Uh, so I have divided this lecture into two parts. First, I discuss uh, how I trained the model in Python and uh, I have chosen CIFAR 10 data set and image classification as a task. In part 2, I discuss all the steps uh, you need to uh, work on while uh, dealing with the, the code in Android Studio. And uh, you can uh, follow this workflow in uh, your projects whenever you are dealing with uh, images, TensorFlow and Android. The only thing that will change is the method in which you fetch the input data and your model. So let's get started. If this is your first encounter in making a TensorFlow Android app, uh, please visit uh, my YouTube channel and uh, watch this particular lecture. I have uh, discussed it in a very basic step-by-step uh, -step process. Uh, how to make your very first Android app and uh, secondly uh, I have also discussed uh, uh, how to classify images and uh, I have uh, used cats assist dogs classification in this particular video so again uh, if you have not uh, done image classification earlier it's uh, not a problem just uh, go uh, visit uh, these two uh, lectures to have a good idea let's quickly go through the python coding part i have discussed uh, this in my earlier lectures but uh, to speed up it i'm just uh, going through fastly import all the desired uh, function and uh, uh, helper functions to load our data and uh, this is the standard training procedure i've used alexnet architecture you can use your own uh, architecture as you feel so here the number of classes is 10 so in cifar 10 data sets i've uh, given declared 10 so start your uh, tensorflow session uh, uh, do your training okay so once you are uh, training so check out the accuracy of uh, the test set after each iteration so once you're happy you, you may even stop it or uh, further train it and uh, once you're done with the training process uh, go ahead and uh, save your uh, model and uh, this particular part will uh, generate uh, the protobuf files which we would be using in uh, android studio so this is all about uh, training uh, and uh, exporting the model uh, don't worry i'm attaching the code in my git account and i've explained it in my earlier lectures the first step after you create a project in android studio is to navigate to the finder uh, location of the app and uh, inside this uh, navigate to app folder go to libs folder and uh, paste all the tensorflow libraries in this particular folder now that you have pasted all the files uh, navigate to gradle script and uh, you need to mention the directory in which uh, our uh, java libraries are present so inside uh, source sets main uh, mention the directory libs so soon after you uh, mention this particular line of code uh, you can uh, find a new folder here jni libs basically the java libraries for tensorflow and uh, you can see all the uh, files that you have recently pasted uh, also uh, create assets folder from press so go to right click press and uh, click a new folder assets folder i've already created it so i'm skipping this step in the assets folder uh, paste uh, your protobuf file and uh, also paste some uh, sample images that you want to test moving on to our main file that is uh, main activity.java uh, first things first import all the necessary libraries uh, we need to import uh, tensorflow libraries in the java file as well we have already done it in the folder but uh, we need to explicitly uh, import in a java file since we are making inference uh, we need uh, inference interface uh, library so import that and uh, the uh, input is basically an image so we need to uh, import uh, uh, image utilities from the java uh, android uh, java library to uh, help us uh, 
pre process and uh, send it in a uh, format uh, uh, friendly to the tensorflow interface okay so import uh, these two files and uh, make some uh, variables here so the first thing is uh, for interface okay and uh, secondly for the model file this points to the directory where the model uh, file re uh, resides basically it's in the assets folder this particular file and uh, these particular two strings are uh, standard for the input node and the output node make sure uh, that these two matches with the one that we have declared while training so while training i have uh, declared my input node uh, as ip node and the output node as op node so these two should match over here otherwise uh, it won't work okay and my input image size is uh, 32 32 into 3 since i am just processing a single uh, image at uh, one particular time i am uh, declaring it as uh, 1 over here and the size of the uh, shape of the image is 32 into 32 into 3 okay and uh, on, during on create uh, uh, inside on create function uh, create a new interface load our model this is the model file that we have declared over here okay so you can uh, print out a statement uh, to denote that the model has uh, denoted successfully it's optional now it's time to pre-process our uh, input image we need to import our image and uh, process our image in a format uh, which is uh, friendly to the tensorflow model so i am going to import the image here so this particular uh, method can uh, you can do it in different ways you can import the image from uh, your camera gallery and uh, sql uh, library and uh, lots of uh, different ways so for simplicity i am just importing from uh, assets uh, folder so i have uh, pasted uh, uh, sample images in this assets folder i have chosen plain <laughs> just for fun so because uh, in my uh, cifar data set we have a aeroplane also so i have chosen plane okay so and uh, we need to load the classes name so this i have taken from cifar data set uh, you have to make sure that uh, uh, the, this is in a proper order okay otherwise it won't work okay so moving on uh, uh, the thing with the uh, Android is uh, all these uh, bitmap files are integer values from uh, 0 to 255 I need to uh, but uh, in my tensorflow uh, the input image uh, is of the shape uh, 32 and uh, the data type is float so I need to uh, make some type conversions here from integer to float so for that I am uh, f following a certain procedure First, I'm, uh, I need to read the values from the bitmap image and then uh, convert into float and then reshape it into 32 into 32 into 3. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a sample temporary uh, integer array of the size of input. Okay, uh, Get the values of the bitmap and uh, store it in this particular array. After storing, I'm going to access uh, each and every value and then uh, I'm going to uh, rescale it from 0 to 255 to the floating point value and then uh, copy them to the uh, null vector that we have, a uh, null array that we have created over here. Uh, one optional step and uh, one suggested step is you can always uh, create a uh, image uh, find the image mean standard deviation and then uh, uh, you know pre-process the image more you, you can uh, remove the uh, change the mean and uh, so that uh, our uh, data set would be uh, each and every image will be uh, pre-processed so it's an optional step it's a suggested step uh, but mostly it will work in most cases but I will uh, highly recommend to do the step if you have uh, the image uh, mean and standard deviation of your data set. Okay. And uh, uh, 
here after uh, uh, converting them I'm storing it in these values okay and uh, one thing is please note that uh, this is a flattened array meaning that it's an one dimensional array and our uh, uh, shape that is required by the tensorflow input is four dimensional how do we typecast it now so basically uh, this helper function uh, fill node float will uh, reshape the value automatically only thing is we need to uh, send the uh, floating values array the flattened array to this particular function and it will uh, reshape it automatically so I have uh, mentioned the input size is of the shape uh, uh, the 1 comma 32 into 32 into 3 right so uh, but my uh, in, uh, input node is the name of the node IP node over here so uh, this particular function will reshape uh, this particular flattened uh, values array into this particular shape that we require I have also mentioned the shape here so uh, I am basically filling the input node with this shape and with this value now uh, our uh, tensorflow will make the inference uh, pass on the values to the tensorflow graph uh, and uh, will uh, end up till the output node okay now I have to take the values from the output node and store it in an array so I'm gonna declare an array float okay fill it with uh, zero values and then uh, fill this uh, result with the values of the output node since we have 10 classes and uh, the y bar is basically of uh, shape 10 10 comma 1 uh, I have uh, declared the result array to be 10 of the say shape 10 and uh, this is our array so once we have the uh, basically the result uh, the it's a this result is of array of length 10 and basically it's the output from a softmax uh, uh, function and the uh, value uh, with the maximum value will be the corresponding class so I have uh, made a, a small helper function to calculate uh, the indices with the maximum uh, value this will uh, give me the index of the maximum value and then uh, I'll find it from my uh, uh, string class over here and I can easily find the corresponding class easily time to test our app so click uh, run app and uh, hooray so this is the class name and uh, this is the image